He meets him, does that, keeps him to get spoiled. Now Samuel has to go and meet King Saul. And my, I can just imagine when his meeting shows up and the king, he's, he's, he's puffy because he's already set up a monument for himself yeah, yeah. At, at Carmel, right? Yeah. Now he's going to go meet the prophet Samuel in Gilgad. And now when Samuel shows up, uh -huh. I can imagine King Saul comes and he's looking all proud. And he's saying, I've done everything that God told me to do. And Samuel is probably sitting here just listening to Saul rant and give all of the information. Oh, well, we killed this and we slaughtered this and we took care of this and we destroyed all of that. And Samuel probably sitting here listening and saying, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. He said, but I hear some sheep. I hear some animals. Yeah. Yeah. So the prophet said, well, well, yeah, yeah, you do. You do hear some of that. He said, but the people, the people, you know, they kept some of the good stuff because they figured since it was perfect, we're going to use that to sacrifice to the Lord. It, it sounds good. You, you, you with me? It sounds good. We can all give some good things and say that I'm sacrificing this for the Lord. I'm giving my time for the Lord. We can make it look like something that he told us not to do, and we can try to turn it around and make it look like I'm doing it for the benefit of God. Yeah. But the whole world, he don't understand that he's in full, total disobedience. He tells them, listen, this is what God has to say. Saul is probably giving all kinds of excuses. Well, the people, they did all of that. And the people kept this, and the people kept that. You know, we talked about last week, how we can always come up with excuses when we come to the carpet by God. He come up with all these excuses, and, and at a certain point, Samuel pretty much told the man, shut up. Just stop talking. You know how, you know how people lie? And they keep lying after lie, after lie, and at the time you just want to say, man, just shut, stop while you are here. You can say those lies of those brothers to your last days. You know, he tell the man, just stop. And because of the arrogance of King Saul, he says, okay, well, carry on. Say whatever you got to say. Yeah. He gets more into the text. And he's saying, God told you. First of all, he said, I need you to think about something. You know, when you didn't have much, when you were not the king, and you were struggling to go through life on certain things, right? He's saying, what were you then at that moment in time? He said, you was nothing until God entered into your life. You know, like how some of us, we are now, we call out, we confess that we're Christians and believers and all that, and, and we don't do no more sinning and all that kind of stuff, but we forget where all of us came from. We forget what all of us were before we met God. And he said, now think about all of that. And he said, now, now, just know that God is really grieved about you. I would hate to hear somebody tell me, and they know that God is saying, I'm grieving. I'm upset. I hate that I even put you. But if I, you know how we've heard some horrible stories where you have some parents who tell their child that, that I hate the day that you were born. Whoa, whoa, 
whoa, whoa, yeah, whoa. Right. I've got to make a change. Yeah, yeah. But we'll see that even in the text. Even hearing that, he even switched it and, and, and he said a little phrase in there. And he said, well, thy God. He didn't say our God. It's almost like he said, well, okay, send little prophet, the God that you serve. He never took ownership of what it was. But here's the, the acting now. Here's the acting now. Listen to this text. <clears throat> After Samuel lays it all out and he tells him that, hey, he anointed you king and he told you to utterly destroy all those particular things. And then in the 20th verse it says, and, Samuel, and Saul said unto Samuel, yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone thy way with the Lord sent me. Let me show you that myself out of the headway crazy. Right. <laughs> I saw you craziness in the text. Come on now. Okay. <clears throat> Let's and Saul said unto Samuel, Yeah, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way that the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekite. He's standing before the prophet, and he's saying, Look, I did everything that God told me to do. I went to battle. Uh -huh. And then he says in the same verse, and I brought back. You shouldn't be bringing back nothing. Nada. Come on now, sir. Ain't that crazy? Yeah. Like, like it. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. <clears throat> Here's the excuse. 21. But the people took up the spoil sheep and oxen mm -hmm. and the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. He's selling them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that stuff must have been destroyed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I do agree. That, that all supposed to be taken care of. Yeah. He said, but the people, mm -hmm. they brought all that stuff. Mm -hmm. No, that's one thing I, 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 I used to say <clears throat> before the job that I got you know, I said I didn't want to get back in management anymore. Mm -hmm. For the simple fact that you don't manager, but what somebody under you do, oh, you have a response. Y'all with me? You know, like people have known people. They do certain things. And all they don't know is but the people took up the spoil the sheep and the oxen, the chief things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice to the Lord thy God and did. Now he's trying to make, he's trying to shine up uh -huh. something that's already rusted. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He's saying, listen, 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 listen. Uh, um, yeah, those animals that they brought, uh, man, he brought that, they kept it because they're going to sacrifice it to the Lord. Oh. And God ain't told them to do no sacrifice at all. God don't need your help on certain things. If God told you to do a certain particular thing, just do what God don't try to help God. You don't need to, don't need to say this kind of stuff when we just say this kind of stuff when we was in the street. Don't help me help them. If you see me in a bad fight, you help the bad. You know what I'm saying? You help the bad. Don't help me. In other words, God is saying, I don't need no help. I don't need these sacrifices. If you didn't do what I told you to do, that's no need you to try to shine this up. That's right. That's right. I'm not sorry. When your sacrifice means and God ain't asked you to do it. Why are you trying to implement it and try to do it? Like God said, oh, well, since you did do that, then yeah, I guess I'll bless you. And God ain't told us to do none of that. And yet we think and we can sacrifice it and make it look good like God is going to be acceptable to whatever. And then 22 says, and Samuel said, had the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices uh 
uh-huh. has in obeying the voice of the Lord? They say, what do you think? Uh-huh. Crazy man. <laughs> what do you think? Uh-huh. That God weighs more. Uh-huh. Hearing his voice and being obedient to it? Uh-huh. Or burnt offerings uh-huh. and sacrifices? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is that anybody in this place today? Uh-huh. And you think that your offerings and your sacrifices is far greater than listening to what God's word tells you to do. Then he tells them, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to mark in that of the fat of the lambs. Watch this. When we disobedience of the curtain all to God, this is still how he feels. What being disobedient is. Listen, any of y'all ever had a stubborn, rebellious, hard head child? Yeah. <laughs> and then hopefully to tell you all, hard head. <laughs> it said, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. God is saying, when you rebel against my word, he said, that's like the sin of evilness. Just being rebellious to God. God looked at it in that extent. God is holy. He's perfect. Any little thing that we do against what God's word is, uh, here's some folk in this place today. He's saying stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. I know I can be stubborn at times. Yes, but if you're honest, you're stubborn with certain things in life too. We may be stubborn with other folk, but maybe we cannot have that attitude when it comes to God. I say, tell them. But you say, I'm worthy. And you say, okay. What do you think is better? You, you're trying to sacrifice them, but don't want to obey what I tell you to say? Now, here's the, the acting part. It says, because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee. From being the king. Yeah. Now, it sounds like, wow, Saul just rejected one time whatever the word of God said, and now all of a sudden God is saying, hey, I'm taking you away from being the king. All right. The verse make it, make it seem like this is just a one time deal. But we are talking about God who knows what better because this thing has taken years over years over years. And then to see that God knows our heart. And when God is seeing in King Saul, he's saying, this dude ain't going to change. This dude won't be stubborn. He's going to keep, want to make do things on his own accordance. He's not going to be obedient to me. What if God is saying the same thing to each and every one of us today? He said, you dress like a preacher. You talk like a preacher. You try to look like a preacher. But I know your real heart. What if he was saying that to each and every one of us today? Now, listen to what Saul got to say. 24 says, And Saul said to Samuel, I have seen, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord in thy word because Excuses. Because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. He's the king. He's the king. He's the king. The king can say kill, and he's supposed to kill. The king's supposed to say sit down, and he's supposed to sit down. He's the the king. You just can't walk up and roll up on the king. There are certain protocols.
come, come on, come on, they got to take place to even address the king. But in here, he makes it sound like he's a jackass. Between me and you. Yeah, come on. Come on. Between me and you. Yeah, 
right? If God had already cut me loose, okay, so be it. But man, you got to go. <laughs> Just can't be you. So go back with me and, and, and make it seem like everything's still good. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. He, he's a, he's, okay, it is what it is. Right? He said, but before the people, Try to make some side deals yes, with God. Yeah. It'll make me look like yeah. this. Make me yeah. have people to see me as this. Yeah. Yeah. And we forget the whole principle yeah. of I need to be obedient to what God will ever want me to be and not what I want man to look at me. Right. Yeah. Wow. Thank you for that. Thanks, Here we go. This is another thing about what disobedience does. I, I had a whole bunch of points. First of all, just know that disobedience is an act of rebellion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right? Listen, to rebel is an act of violence or open resistance to an established government or ruler. When God has established certain things and he's given his word on how we ought to conduct and live our life, uh -huh. and when I be rebellious to that particular way, I'm being totally against what God has already said in place. Listen, I can rebel against you. You can rebel against me. But we got to have enough common sense that we shouldn't be rebelling against God's word. Listen, there's no man or woman that can put you in heaven or hell. But God is the only one that can. So just know that sometimes of disobedience is an act of rebellion. Also, just know that disobedience is an act of being stubborn. God says, but you do otherwise. How many times can God be told you to get up, go and touch, go and speak, go and pray? And because of the setting, we say, oh, no, I ain't. God is saying, okay, keep being stubborn. You know, but being stubborn can cost you and others. Watch this. It says that being stubborn is also a form of idolatry. Oh, and it's sinful. <laughs> that means you're so caught up in you oh, that you forget the whole principle oh, of what you're here to serve. Oh, oh. Yeah. Listen, disobedience disrespects yeah. God's word. Listen, if you if you any individual, uh -huh. nobody likes to be disrespected. Okay. Period. Period. If you want to get my my, 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 my blood boiling, say something that disrespect me as a, a man, a human being. That'll get me stirred up. That may get you stirred up, but we do it to God's prayer all the time. Think about it. You don't like being disrespected. But how many times we disrespect God's word? And that's the person we need to be worried and concerned about not being. Yeah. Know it. Who in their right mind? <laughs> Knowing who God is. Right now. Who disrespect Ooh. this word. Right in other words, all of us. Right right yeah. Well, I said disobedience. Uh, disobedience is a form of being a hypocrite. to make it look like we, we teach yeah. Jake's yeah. for free. <laughs> uh, we, we on the deacon board and we trying to pray and pray and pray to our God himself. Show up. And tears come down from his eyes. <laughs> and the whole while our hearts are full of hatred, full of envy, full of jealousy, we carry acronyms in front of our names and the whole world is just a smoke. 
the street. Yeah. Would have been 
totally different. Maybe our ending would be totally different if we were to be obedient to God. Listen, obedience is far better than sacrifice. When we're listening to God, doing everything that God told us to do, and we do it all the way, not halfway, not three quarters, but we do it all the way. We can't tell how our story is going to end. Tell it. And watch this, it gets even deeper. After Saul, Samuel, kills King Agag. If I was Saul, at that moment, I probably would have... All right. Come on, next. What is God telling him? Come on. Then it says, Samuel went to Rome, and Saul went up to his house in Gibeah of Saul. And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Listen, listen, listen. We said a few weeks ago, a few weeks ago, let's change names. Put Saul on. Yeah. Out and put your name there. Yeah. Take Samuel out and put Christ's name there. Right. Right. And we know that if God speaks to Christ uh -huh. Uh -huh. and he knows everything that God is speaking of and yet he's telling each and every one of us how we need to live our life, uh -huh. I dare not want to hear the words that Jesus said, depart from me. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Just depart from me. That you, you so bad off. I, I can't stand to even look at you right now. I can't deal with you right now. And yet he's still mourning for each and every one of us. The little stuff that we do do. Who to say that Jesus still ain't mourning for us right now because of our disobedience of what we're doing towards the Father. We may come in church and make it look like everything is all together. Like we've got no problems nowhere else in our life. But the whole while, God is saying the same example yes. I gave in my word, yes. it should apply to you and I. Yes. Yes. Listen, we can yes, make all sir. kinds of sacrifices. Yes, sir. We can make all kinds of sacrifices. Yes, sir. I don't got to go to that 2 o'clock program today. Yes, you don't feel like going. You don't feel like going. But I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I really didn't feel like coming to Sunday school this morning. Come on, sir. Had to get up a whole hour and a half early. On, but I'm going to go. Because I'm on the deacon board. I'm going to go. On, because I'm a minister. I'm going to go. Because I'm supposed to go and support pastor. All that. But we need to be going. Because of being our obedience. Yeah, 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 yeah. Listen, 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 yeah. listen, listen, listen. Yeah. Listen, listen. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to be honest. Yeah. Listen to this. Yeah. What if God is saying, I'm going to give you your breakthrough on May 21st at 215 if you're in that service? Yeah. And watch it. You know some person on your heart. I know that I should go. Come on, come on, sir. But I really don't want to go. Come on, and because we made so many mental sacrifices to ourselves, we decide I ain't gonna be obedient to what God is telling me. So I'm just gonna stay home and cheat. And watch this when the blessed angel comes through and he starts to bless folk that's in their household. And then you realize, you don't even realize that God already had your breakthrough and your blessing already there had you just been obedient to this word. We don't know the time. We don't know when God is going to see that thing stirring up. But you know, God's word, you tell me something. 
And he said, if my cup runneth over, if, if it poured in this bit for evangelist, right? If my cup just got filled up, that was a bit too much. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can get my feet with it because uh -huh. I'm still loud in yes. obedience right. to what it is. Yes, <laughs> Listen, sometimes <laughs> we may be missing out on our own blood.
in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. And ye always have all sufficiency in all things. May abound in, in, in every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad. He has given to the poor his righteousness. May we all hold our offerings in our right hand. And repeat after me. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. For the gift of giving. For the gift of giving. Lord, I give my offering. Lord, I give my offering. Willfully and honestly. Willfully and honestly. According to your will. According to your will. Bless this offering. Bless this offering. Bless your dwelling place. Bless your dwelling place. Church Friends and Family Day at 4709 Windy Street in Houston, Texas. The thing for this occasion is what a friend we have in Jesus. Yeah. Scripture references John 14, verses 12 through 13. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friend. If there is anything we can do to make your visit with us more enjoyable, please feel free to contact us. Amen? Amen. Also happening at the Mount on Sunday, June 11th, is the graduation recognition during morning service. 
So if there's anyone that is graduating from high school or college, please see Sister um, Leslie Hamilton or Evangelist Gwen Wright, no later than next Sunday, May the 28th, 2023. Sunday, June the 11th at Mount Pilgrim is Men's Day at 10 a.m. Yeah. Sunday, June the 25th, 2023, please join us and invite others to the following event hosted by Mount Pilgrim Sisterhood Ministry, Women in Red, Sunday, June the 25th, 2023, at 3 p.m. Amen. Amen. Also by the Sisterhood Ministry on August, Saturday, August 19th at 2023 at 7 p.m. is a music extravaganza. On Sunday, Baptist Church at 3 p.m. celebrating their pastor, Pastor Wilkins' anniversary. Amen? Amen. Progressive Missionary Baptist Church. Once a year, we celebrate two wonderful and faithful people that have impacted many lives. We are cordially inviting you to our pastor and wife 29th appreciation service. We want you to come out, help us celebrate, and lift up the name of Jesus. The service will be held at Progressive Missionary Baptist Church on June 4th and June 11th, 2023 at 3 p.m. You are welcome to come out either of these days. A love offering is welcome and much appreciated. If you are unable to give, please go to the service. Your presence is greatly appreciated. Thank you for your cooperation. We look forward to seeing you soon. Amen. Amen. The public relations will be hosting their annual summer uh, lock-in coming up in July. Uh, all the children that are interested, please see Minister Hamilton, President Mia Hall, or Vice President Jalen. Do we have any birthdays or anniversaries this week? You supposed to got up and said that. Yes,
I'll get double today. All right. <laughs> and while I am saying this, you should have kept it. And also, while I am uh, uh, doing this for uh, the Saturday before the Women in Red program. Okay. The men are going are, are going to feed our women.
W-E-N-D-A, the church is like right there in the second building on the left-hand side. All right, so we're supposed to be there at 2 o'clock. Now, next Saturday, next Sunday, uh, we got, is it Plantersville? Yes. Okay, it's Plantersville. Hey, Amen. It's, it's Plantersville, so we got to be there at Center Point um, um, Baptist Church for their um, pastor and wife anniversary. So we got to be there next Saturday, next Sunday at 2 o'clock just as well. All right, so this will be our second year going there. And they really, really appreciated us when we were there last year. And they cooked. They had a harvest of food for us on, on last on last year. So if they did it then, I can just imagine what it's going to be like. Amen on next Sunday. All right. I see Pete shaking his head. So. Amen. <laughs> Over the next, um, you know, two weeks, all right? So at 2 o'clock, and, you know, we do have to speak at both of them, you know, so we look forward to the choir being there, and we also look forward for you, my brothers and sisters, just attending just as well, all right? So if there is nothing... First, giving respect to Pastor Hall, and Pastor Mays, and the rest of the church. We have... Uh, had envelopes inviting women in red uh, inside the envelope invitations, and they've been sitting there. So we need to do better. So what I'm doing the, today, having those passed out, when you leave out of the church, get one of those envelopes, please. And invite your family and friends. We want to have a good time. It was good last year. We want to make it even better this year. Um, and also, uh, everybody just about in here have a phone. You can make a copy of that invitation and send it to your friends and family through your phone. Let's get on the ball with this, please. And speaking of Plantersville, that's near my hometown, Navasota, Texas. So I know exactly where it is. Good old country people. Love of people. So, anyway, please get one of these envelopes or sheet. We got sheets also. Let's, 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 don't let the guests be more than the uh, church members. We're a family. Let's support all of these ministries. Please. Thank you. All right. <laughs> No, they didn't know. So, yeah, if you didn't know what they were, so now we know what they are now. So it's them for the baby to go out. Well, the ushers can pass them out if you want to. Okay. All right. Let me see. Which makes me 
Jesus Christ, one child of the living God. A child of the living God. And my 